Good morning and welcome. As we begin our celebration, we will chant the entrance antiphon. I'll chant it the first time through, and then everyone can chant it the second time through with me. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on a cross. Before Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for the frequent sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us your servants to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him comfort, confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because ze zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there is none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and, he own, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time draws near. In your house, I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we take a moment to recognize all of our various words that we say, everything from Jesus, I love you, to, well, yeah, I guess I can do that, knowing you're going to go commit a sin, 
there's this huge dichotomy of words that we say, and there's a meaning that lies deep in the midst of our hearts. And it's that meaning then that God will judge us on. Because if we were saying it just to be part of the in crowd, then all of a sudden our hearts are focused more on the in crowd than they are on God. And if we do our actions, even this day, whatever we have planned for this day, if those actions are not about Christ, about bringing Christ into our world, into our workplace, into the places where we go shopping and into our homes and to allow Christ to dwell there, then what is that meaning that lies deeply hidden within our heart? For whom do we act? Jesus is calling us all into a conversion about acting totally for him. So that the thoughts that dwell in our mind, which lead to the words that come out of our mouth, and then to the very actions that we do in our day, that they may be all about one integral uh, being, Jesus Christ, and the way in which Christ has called us to be his holy people. It's very easy to see that type of thing in someone like St. Mother Teresa, that everything she did was for God. And so let us be more like the great saints and allow our lives to be focused totally on God. Because whether it's Pierre Giorgio Fersati or whether it's St. Francis or whether it's St. Teresa of Lisieux, all of them, all those great saints, constantly conformed their life in every way possible to Christ. Let us imitate that for today, because it's in this then that we too are preparing for the great Passover, the way in which Christ passes over death and leads us to his holy communion. Together, my brothers and sisters, let us lift up our hearts and our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the church throughout the world, that all the members of the church might be united to the mystery of Christ, His passion, death, and resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Let us pray for all those who have fallen away from the church that their hearts may once again be converted to the truth of the faith that God had given them, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all those who govern us, that they may see a new light, the light of Christ, and that they may live their life in accordance with God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our parish, for its continued growth, and for all those who are moving into our parish during these times, that they may seek us out and that they may come to worship and to encounter Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for all those who are sick and suffering, especially Mary Stegmuller and all those we hold in the, heart, in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for all those who have died, especially for the souls in purgatory. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for the repose of the soul of Susan Slaughter Socks 
for whom this holy Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and all the prayers that dwell in the silence of our hearts, for we ask that you hear them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, you will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his souls. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that, celebrating your Son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Scholastica and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, Jorge, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people 
you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
together the communion antiphon. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. For Holy Communion, if you please come forward and line up parallel to the altar. I'll begin over a missive and work my way across. And if you receive Holy Communion, if you'd use the side doors to go out and come back around to your seat, um, that would be great. Please come forward for Holy Communion.
Let us pray. Endow us, Almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death in time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Just as a reminder, tonight uh, begins Tenebrae. Uh, that'll happen at 9 p.m. tonight here in the church. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Grant your faithful, O Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And for the Archdiocese of Denver, that through the fatherly intercession of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, the Holy Spirit will stir and deflame our local church, boldly focused on mission and committed to announcing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And together, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth.